6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Hassan Gilani. First, the headlines. An in camera session of National Assembly regarding security situation will be held tomorrow. Information Minister says the economic situation is improving in the country with gradual reduction in trade and current account deficits. ECC has approved Prime Minister's Youth Business and Agriculture Loan Scheme for provision of 15,000 e-bikes and e-rickshaws in current financial year. Pakistan and Uzbekistan have agreed on timely completion of Trans-Afghan Railways project. All parties Hurriyat Conference urges members of G20 to boycott upcoming event being hosted by fascist Narendra Modi BJP government in UN recognized disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir. First T20 of five match series between Pakistan and New Zealand will be played in Lahore tomorrow. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has said an in-camera session of National Assembly regarding situation of security will be held tomorrow. Speaking in the National Assembly today on the points raised by some members, he said the members will be allowed to raise their questions and concerns at this special session. Minister for Defence Khwaja Asif said the military leadership will be present in the session and respond to queries of the members. He said the military leadership is cognizant of the challenge posed by terrorism. He said those who help these terrorists settle in the civilian areas must be held accountable. Prime Minister Mohammad Shehbaz Sharif says Pakistan is looking forward to International Rescue Committee's continued support for disaster management in Pakistan. He expressed these views while talking to President of International Rescue Committee David Miliband, who called on him in Islamabad today. Shehbaz Sharif underscored the importance of IRC's valuable support for reconstruction and repair of the damaged schools and hospitals in the flood affected areas. On this occasion, David Miliband reaffirmed the IRC's desire to further deepen collaboration with Pakistan in disaster and climate change management. David Miliband also called on Finance Minister Isaac Dar. The minister briefed him about steps taken by the government for providing economic relief to the public. IRC president commended measures of the government. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif says Imran Khan has embattled the vital foreign policy interests of the country. In a tweet today, he said, From accusing the United States of toppling his government to now wooing the U.S. to man fences, Imran's, Imran Niazi's hypocrisy knew no bounds. The coalition government has demanded resolution of the bench constituted by Chief Justice to hear petition regarding the Supreme Court Practice and Procedure Bill 2023. Addressing a joint presser along with representatives of all the coalition partners in the government in Islamabad today, Minister for Law Azam Nazir Tarar said, constituting the bench even when the President has not signed the bill and the legislation is underway in the Parliament is not acceptable at all. He said all the coalition parties outrightly reject this bench. The Minister for Law again demanded constituting full court to hear the case so that collective wisdom should prevail. Minister for Information and Broadcasting Maryam Aurangzeb has said the economic situation has been improving with gradual reduction in trade and current account deficits. In a series of tweets, she said when PDM assumed responsibility of the government, the country had the largest trade deficit of $49 billion and current account deficit of $17.5 billion. She said that, however, the country's economy is now being stabilized by adopting prudent economic policies. This is Radio Pakistan. 
Economic Coordination Committee of Cabinet has approved Prime Minister's Youth, Business and Agriculture Loan Scheme for provision of 15,000 e-bikes and e-rickshaws in the current financial year. The decision was taken at a meeting of the committee held in Islamabad today with Finance Minister Ishaq Dar in the chair. Under the scheme, loan up to 0.5 million rupees will be given under Tier 1 at 0% markup rate for repayment in three years. The ECC approved declaration of customs station Angurada as authorized export land route to Afghanistan and through Afghanistan to Central Asian republics. The ECC endorsed Pakistan Sugar Mill Association Punjab Zones Agreement to provide 20,000 metric ton of sugar at retail price of 95 rupees per kg through the government of Punjab at district level. Pakistan and Uzbekistan have agreed on timely completion of Trans-Afghan Railways project among Pakistan, Uzbekistan and Afghanistan. The understanding to this effect was reached at a meeting between Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Hina Rabbani Khar and Acting Minister for Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan Saidov Bakhtiyor Oldivich on the sidelines of the fourth meeting of neighboring countries of Afghanistan in Samarkand today. Both sides express satisfaction at the current trajectory of bilateral exchanges in the economic, trade and investment domains. Pakistan and Iran have agreed to remain closely engaged on matters of regional and global significance, including Afghanistan. The understanding was reached during meeting between Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Hina Rabbani Khar and Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahin on the sidelines of the fourth meeting of foreign ministers of neighboring countries of Afghanistan in Uzbek capital Samarkand today. Hina Rabbani reiterated Pakistan's desire to strengthen Pak-Iran fraternal ties. She also met Deputy Foreign Minister of Turkmenistan, Vepa Hadijev. Both leaders reiterated the commitment to implement the Tapi gas pipeline project at the earliest. Three terrorists have been killed in a heavy exchange of fire with security forces during an intelligence-based operation in Gishgori of Balochistan. According to ISPR, the operation was initiated to clear a hideout of terrorists. A huge cache of arms and ammunition, including improvised explosive devices, has been recovered from the terrorists. Incarcerated senior leader of All Parties Hurriyat Conference, Shabir Ahmad Shah, and other leaders and organizations have urged the members of G20 to boycott the upcoming event being hosted by fascist Narendra Modi BJP government in UN-recognized disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Shabir Ahmad Shah, in a message sent from New Delhi's Tihar jail, said that the Modi regime, in brazen violation of the UN Security Council resolutions, had unilaterally and unlawfully repealed the special status of occupied Kashmir in 2019. Since then, he said it has been shamelessly peddling lies to befool the world community about the ground situation in the territory. He hoped that the members of group will not allow the Indian government to use this meeting to project its so-called Nobelsy narrative. Southeast Asian nations have strongly condemned Myanmar military's bombing of a village in central Sagyang region that killed dozens of people, including children. The regional bloc stressed that the all forms of violence must end immediately, particularly the use of force against civilians. The United Nations and the United States and many other countries have already condemned the attack by the generals who seized power from the elected government in a coup in February 2021. First T20 of five match series between Pakistan and New Zealand will be played in Lahore tomorrow. The match will start at 9 in the night. And finally the weather. Dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while hot and gusty winds in central southeastern part of the country during the next 12 hours. And now the headlines once again. In camera session of the National Assembly regarding security situation will be held tomorrow. Information Minister says the economic situation is improving in the country with gradual reduction in trade and current account deficits.
ACC has approved Prime Minister's Youth Business and Agriculture Loan Scheme for provision of 15,000 e-bikes and e-rickshaws in the current financial year. Pakistan and Uzbekistan have agreed on timely completion of Trans-Afghan Railways project. And this is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio